Lord, that this may be another night of true worship, that the Holy Spirit may come into our hearts as he has been through the week and the days that we have been visiting here in this lovely Angelus Temple. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you will bless this place. And may it stand as a memorial until Jesus comes, the contribution to a woman who believed you and served you. We thank you for all these things. May this great ministry that she started never end until the coming of the Lord. Get glory unto thyself tonight, Lord, by healing the sick. And those here, maybe who does not know thee in the pardoning of their sins, May this be the night that they'll accept you. Grant it, Lord, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I see they have begun to lay some handkerchiefs up here. Each night I try to, to pray for these handkerchiefs. And now... If you do not get your handkerchief up here and you would like me to send you one, it will not be a handkerchief, just a little piece of ribbon that I have prayed over. Or just write me at my home at Post Office Box 325, Jeffersonville, Indiana. Any peoples, and I send out thousands of those a week. They go all over the world. Now, I'm not giving you this address to send to Dunn you or to... All these things are free. There's no price on any of it. It's just merely to help you. We don't have any radio programs. We have nothing, no soliciting, nothing to sell. The only thing we want to do is try to help you. And so if you, uh, if you want one of the handkerchiefs, the little cloths that we have prayed over, and now many people anoint those cloths, which that's all right. Anything that God will bless, I'm certainly for it. But if you'll notice in the scriptures, Paul never anointed them. They'd just taken them from his body, handkerchiefs and aprons. And so the sick were healed. And just thinking of a testimony I got some time ago from Germany. A little woman had been at arthritis since she'd been in the wheelchair for, oh, several years. And it was rather cute when the, my German office interpreted it and sent it to me. Her letter returned. She got that little cloth and I uh, have on there. We got a prayer band that prays every three hours around the world. And that's around the clock, of course. So then she tucked this little cloth and put it on her and had the people and her pastor in. And they all prayed and she confessed everything that she knowed that she had ever done wrong. So as soon as she got the little cloth pinned on her, she said, Now you, Mr. Devil, you're finished. And up she got and went running around over the house out of the wheelchair. Just that simple. She, she said, now, Mr. Devil, you finished. <laughs> and she's went walking, was all right, see. Just, we try to make God so complicated that people can't touch him. That's how they miss it. He's, it's so simple. God's made it so simple. I believe the scripture says in one place, though a fool will not err. It's so simple. And when we go to making it complicated, then we get plumb away from him. See, his program is real. Just God dwells among his people in simplicity. Just the least that you can study or try to figure out, well, you just don't do that. You just take him at his word like a child and go ahead. I want to read just uh, for a text tonight the first phrase of the um, th 48th verse of the 24th chapter of Genesis. And I bowed my head and worshiped the Lord. We've had rather a hard day. We had a glorious time down at the, the breakfast this morning and, and we had uh, just a grand time of fellowship. May God ever bless that move, the Christian businessman. And we love them. They are doing a great work trying to help the church, see, to just kind of, as I would call it, being a country 
boy, they, we used to take the wagon up the hill and we'd what we call scotch the wheel. How many knows what scotching a wheel is? Well, I could almost just take off my coat and preach in my shirt sleeves tonight. A lot of country folks here. So scotching the wheel. Well, that's what I think the Christian businessman's doing is scotching the wheel just to help hold the load as the church pulls it up the mountain. We've been speaking in the last three nights on Abraham. And last night we left Abraham on on the top of the mountain with his little son Isaac who had been spared from death. A very beautiful picture of God the Father offering up his own son. He spared not his own son. And how that God had, the great creator Jehovah Jireh, had created a ram in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Now the ram wasn't there when Abraham was getting the rocks and laying them together. or He had heard it. But just when he had got ready to take his own son's life, then the ram was behind him, blating with his horns hooked into the, the vines or the sh- shrubs or ever what it was on top of the mountain. And we discussed why, how did that ram get there? Why, he was at least a hundred miles from civilization among wild beasts. And the ram would not be up on top of that mountain where there was no water or grass. So you see, it'd have to be that God placed him there because he is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide himself a sacrifice. And he's just as much Jehovah Jireh tonight as he was then. And if he's Jehovah Jireh, he's Jehovah Rapha also, another redemptive name, which is Jehovah the Healer. Them names are the compound names of Jehovah, and they are absolutely inseparable. Jehovah our shield, Jehovah our buckler, Jehovah our banner, Jehovah our healer, Jehovah our sacrifice. And you cannot separate those names, for if he ceases to be Jehovah Rapha, then he's not Jehovah Jireh. And if he's still Jehovah Jireh, he's still Jehovah Rapha, both Savior and Healer. And then tonight we're going to take the subject of uh, time of decision. And over in this 24th chapter, we're coming down to the place now to where this boy that was spared on the mountain and a ram was offered in his place, God speaking that he would offer up his own son. Then this boy's mother had died, Sarah, and the father was getting old and there was a time when Abraham had to make a decision what class of people that his son would marry into. And I think that's a good policy for the sons of Abraham to do the same thing. Now he did not want his son to marry into those Canaanite women. It had come a time when he had to make that decision. And There's times where we are forced to make a decision. There is times when we are forced to say yes or no. It comes to all of us. Abraham had that time to strike him. Who was going to choose for his son's wife? Because he knew that he was a promised child and that bloodstream must keep clean until the coming of the Messiah. Then he sent Eliezer, his faithful servant. And then Eliezer, the servant of Abraham, 
which had been his elder servant and a faithful servant. And Abraham called Eliezer and had him to put his hand on his thigh and swear by the God of heaven that he would not let Isaac marry a Canaanite woman, that he would go to the Hebrew family, some of Abraham's people, and select a wife. And then when Eliezer got his camels together and took the journey, then he come to a place to where he had to make another decision. And that decision was whether he was going to use his own judgment or whether he was going to trust God's judgment. And that's going to come to each one of us before we leave this building tonight. Especially you people here that's sick and afflicted. It's, you're forced to a place. And Eliezer, after he had got to the gate of this city, now was he going to take his own intellectuals to try to pick out perhaps what he thought to be the most suitable wife for his master's son's wife? And was he going to use his own judgment? Could he go into the city and look around and find the most attractive woman? Or what he thought would his own self would be the, the best for him. And I think Eliezer made a grand decision when he said he would trust God for it. Now, you're going to be forced to the same thing. Are you, after these about 12 or 13 nights of constantly moving of the Holy Spirit, proving by His Word, showing His visible signs that the Messiah was prophesied that would do in these days before the destruction of the world. Every signpost pointing to it. And now are you going to trust tonight when you are prayed for your own intellectual thinking? Or are you going to trust it to God? I believe and I'm trusting that you are going to put it in the hands of God. Make your decision now that it's going to be God's wisdom that you're going to trust, not your own thinking. If you'll do that, you'll never go wrong. Sometimes God's ways are so hard that to the human mind to comprehend, you just think that it's ridiculous. And faith is ridiculous to the carnal mind. It's crazy to anything except God and the one who has the faith. Then by faith we see, we believe. Things that our eyes or mind does not declare just because that we believe it. Reasoning? Why, it would never reason to be right. So we can't reason it out. To study it, we'll just only muddle our minds up. And there's only one way to do it, is to have faith that what God promises, God's able to perform. That settles it. Don't try to say, well, now how could it be we're living in a modern time? Keep that out of your mind. Don't even take the second thought. Just take him at his word. You make that decision right now that what God says God can keep. It's not my business to figure it out. Because if I do that, I'm working then in the intellectual realms. God don't move in the head. He moves in the heart. Now we find out that Eliezer decided that 
though he was a good man, and he was on a great mission, and he was under oath. Now when a man gets to that place, it's time not to use his own thinking. So he knelt down and began to pray and said, Lord, if you have blessed me in the way and have brought me here, let it come to pass that the first damsel that comes from the city to get water, because it was in the evening time that they had come out to get their water. And he said, if I go ask her for a drink, see him asking for the sign of God. And if she gives me a drink and said, I'll also water your camels. That'll be the one that you have chosen. He committed it to God. Let it be your choice, Lord. Oh, if we could only learn to be a trusted servant of God like that, that we could commit things to God. It's the most powerful thing that I know of is a committal. Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Commit your thinking to Him. If you're sick and the doctors can't help you no more, then just commit your case to God and act like it's already done. Something will have to take place. It just can't keep from it. Because God is a creator. The Word of God is a seed. And a seed is planted in the ground. And if that seed is watered, it springs forth into life. If it's a germatized seed. Jesus said the word was a seed. Then if the seed has fallen into your heart and you'll water that seed by faith believing, it'll bring forth just after its kind. Ah, uh, you can put me on record. And after 30 years of preaching, I can say this, that I have never one time sincerely ever asked God for anything and committed it to Him. He either give it to me or told me why He couldn't do it. And if you'll take the right mental attitude towards any divine promise God has made, it'll bring it to pass. If you'll just simply say it's God's Word, it's not for me to try to figure it out. That's God's business. He spoke it and that's all necessary. Something will take place. The success... If there has been any to the glory and honor of God, you, I have no education to be a preacher. And God knows I'm not a healer. But it's just taking God at His word. He said He would do it. Those visions is because the angel that met me and charged me to this commission. He told me these things. and That's the reason he's never failed. And he will never fail. Because it was of God. This is about 15 years. And ever since I was about a little over two years old, I saw the first vision. And there's been literally hundreds of them. And not one has ever failed, and it never will because it's God doing it and not man. It have been me who have been gone a long ago. So as Eliezer believed and committed himself to God, then they could have searched the world over. They could have combed through every city. 
or went to every house and they could have never found a better mate for Isaac than Rebecca was. Even to this day when in my old ritual that I use for marrying the people, I use that. It's the old Wesleyan Methodist ritual. As Isaac and Rebecca lived happily together, made this couple. They were sweethearts. And it was a type of Christ and the church. And you notice, after he had just got through saying it in his heart, finished his prayer, and here come the most lovely lady of all the land, a beautiful young Hebrew girl with the water pot setting on her hip under her arm, going down perhaps meditating on the goodness of God. And what was she here on earth for? All of a sudden she went down into the spring and, and got the water up and started back and a kind old man standing there said, Would you give me just a little drink of water? Would you not like to have been standing there to felt the spirit of the living God moving, performing something? And she gave him the drink and also drawed for the camels. And then the time came that she had to make a decision. He gave her bracelets and so forth and told her the story. Now look, the only thing that she had was a story of Abraham's servant. So just faith cometh by hearing. She heard that Abraham had a son that was heir to all things that Abraham had. And these little tokens was just a little bitty thing. Just a little symbol of the great wealth that Abraham had that his son was going to fall heir to all of it. And she believed the story. And the father and the mother believed the story. And he said, now don't bother me now. Don't interrupt the, the Lord because I'm on my way and let me take the girl and be going. Of course, you know how that made the mother feel. She said, well, let's just wait at least 10 days. Lebanon, and her brother also said, just give her... Ten days to make up her mind. She's the one who's going to have to make up her mind. Give her ten days. So the true servant, the model servant, said, No, let her go now. So they decided for Rebecca to make up her own mind. That's what you've got to do tonight. You've got to make up your own mind. You can't take the mind of what somebody else has said. It's going to be your attitude towards the message that you hear. You can't take what, if the doctor turns you down, he said you're going to die. Now you've either got to believe what he said... Your mother says if, if you go down there to that Angelus temple and get mixed up with a lot of that stuff they got there on baptism of the Holy Spirit and all this religion, well, you're going to lose your mind. Maybe she belongs in some of the great societies here. Or maybe your father discouraged you. But you as an individual have to make up your mind. It's not what anybody else says. It's what you think. 
when you hear the message that Christ heals the sick, it's your own attitude, your decision. So they called in the young girl, Rebecca, and perhaps the conversation was something like this. Rebecca, we have fed you and raised you to the best of our knowledge to be a, a virgin girl, and that you are. But here comes a stranger among us with some evidence that there is a rich man who's going to give to his son all these blessings. Do you wish to go with him now, or do you wish to wait for about ten days till you make up your mind? Now, remember the servant said, I want to be on my way. God has given me good favor, and I'm ready to be on my way. God, don't never put off tomorrow what you can do today. That's the way the message is when it's preached. You hear of a king, God, who is son Christ falls heir to all things. And we've got a little foretaste of it by the Holy Spirit. What do you think about him? Have you got faith in him? Remember, she had to choose by faith. She had never seen the man. But she had to choose by faith and the words of a servant. That's the same way you'll have to do. Because that's the only way there is to do it. God sends out his servants. They preach the word. Faith cometh by hearing. What do you think about it? That's up to you to make your choice. I would advise you not to put it off. You say, well, um, I have always longed to receive the Holy Spirit. I better think it over. Don't think it over. This is the time. It's the truth. I believe that God would heal me someday. As long as you keep that in your mind, you're a defeated person. God healed you 1,900 years ago. Now is the day of your decision. When you hear the message that Christ was wounded for your transgressions, with His stripes you were healed. This is the time now to believe it. You have to make other decisions. Before you get married, you have to decide on what girl you're going to make your wife. And you women have to decide on what man's going to be your husband. You better not put it off too long. He might change his mind. Like the woman was here some time ago. She had two men. They were both good men. And she couldn't make up her mind which one she was going to marry. And she lost them both. So God wants immediate action. If you love Him, throw everything else aside and take Him. If you believe His Word, cast everything else away and take His Word. It's a time of decision. You have to make up your mind. In politics, you have to make up your mind who you're going to vote for. Deciding on a car, the family has to make up their mind what kind of car they're going to get. As many times you're forced to a decision and you're almost at that spot right now. Sinner friend here and in Radio Land both. You are now on the spot. What are you going to do about it? You say, oh, well, I don't care about praying. I, my life is young and I, I don't think I have to do it now. Don't put it off too long. Here a few weeks ago, many of you in Radio Land in here are very well acquainted with the story of that airplane falling up in the eastern states there in New York and drowning all those people trying to go under the bridge. About two weeks before that, there was a trial about some 
uh, property down in, um, on the Bowery. And they had a couple of little preachers down there who could hardly sign their own name, not educated, and a great lawyer by the name of Greenwall was just uh, working these little fellows over. They had said, get rid of that. What could you do to it? You couldn't better the place. But they had an abstract deed. So they wanted to hold it. They said, what can you do for it when you can't hardly sign your own name? We need that for something else. And the little fellows come to the stand and one of them got up and he said, Sirs, it is true that we don't have educations and we couldn't improve the property. But the Lord led us to take that place. The Lord told us to do it. And Mr. Greenwall stood up and his fear and he said, We don't need God in this. We don't have nothing to do with it. Don't you call God in on this. We don't want him in on this. Two weeks later, he drowned it in the water in that airplane wreck. I wonder if he had time or wanted to call the Lord into it then or not. See, there's a time when you're forced and be careful what you say. Two years ago, I was in Phoenix, Arizona. And Mr. Brown... Many of you know him, Mr. Young Brown, Brother Jack Moore's associate. We were trying to find a cheaper hotel. I don't believe it's... I better not say that. Well, I've started it. I might as well keep it up. I, I don't believe it's good, and I don't believe it's... It's all right. I don't say you're not a Christian, but I don't think it's becoming to a Christian to try to have have the best. I get so sick and tired of hearing people say, oh, I wouldn't go to that place. I've never seen the place yet. I couldn't go for the Lord. I don't care where it would be. If it's a little mission, if it's wherever it may be, I don't care. I don't think we should try to put on a lot of make-believe. What we call, if the world expression, put on the dog. I don't think we should do that. Christians, that's not becoming to a Christian. Our Lord didn't even have a place to lay his head. He had no house to live in. As I said this morning, my little boy said to me a few weeks, about a week before I come down to California... He was laying on the couch looking up at the picture of Jesus, and he said, Has Jesus got a boat? He loves fishing so well. And I thought, no, when he preached the gospel, he had to borrow a boat. But he's a captain of the old ship of Zion. Whole lot of a putt on. We don't need it. And the church being nice had put me up in a, a ritzy hotel. I didn't even know how to use the forks at the table and, and all them stuff laying out there. I, I had to watch somebody else see which fork they'd pick up. I, I, I didn't know how to use it. And I wanted to get out of there. And I was trying to find me a, a cheap hotel. And I was riding around town and I said, Brother Brown, stop there and I'll go over on the side of the street and we'll wait for you. He said, I said, ask them if they got a room. And it looked like kind of a third or fourth class hotel. And so he went over and a few moments he come running across the street and he jaywalked. I think that's what you call it out here and pay $15 for it. But they, he jaywalked across the street and there was a little policeman sitting over there. Oh my, did he tear him up? And he said, where are you from anyhow? And Brother Brown, just about like myself, can't talk good. And he said, I'm from Louisiana. 
He said, do you mean that they let you jaywalk in Louisiana? And he said, just walk anywhere you want to. So he, he said, uh, walk across the street. He said, yes. He said, you're lying. Mr. Moore said, no, I'll vouch you for him. Said, well, you can walk any way you want to in Shreveport where we live. As long as you're just watch your traffic. Oh, and that little policeman got arrogant. And Mr. Brown said, sir, I'm only telling you the truth. He said, you did that just to act smart because you see me on the corner and know I was a policeman. You know, one of these little fellows wants a feather in a cap. So he said, you're just acting smart. I'm going to jerk you out and put you in jail. He said, mister, you can put me in jail if that's your rules. But said, I'm a minister of the gospel. He said, I won't lie. I'm honest. If I'd known you shouldn't have done that, I would not have done it. He said, but I didn't know any difference. Oh, and he got real nasty about it. And I told him I was a minister and Mr. Moore was a minister. There was two more ministers in the car. Oh, he really got raw then. <laughs> ministers, lawbreakers. And I said, we're not lawbreakers, sir. I said, we're an honorable man who preached the gospel. And he, something said to me like this, Be not deceived, for God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. I just quit talking to the fellow, held my head down and let him go ahead till he got all the steam blowed out. And then he threatened us and everything else. And of course, he'd been brought before a judge and a man proved that he didn't know any difference. We hadn't been there but two days. And we'd been, he'd been living out in a, one of those side streets way out king's courts or something like that and he didn't know any different but the policeman just to be nasty but you know the bible said touch not mine anointed i said well did you get the room brother brown said he didn't have any i said well i'll go back and we started driving out and i took them back to their place about six blocks away or a little more and i come back around just in time to see the man try to run around, a man making a right hand turn and was crushed under the wheels. I stopped my car and pulled over to one side to be sure that that was the policeman. And it was. He had run under a truck making a right hand turn, policeman's fault, slid his tire sideways, went right under the big wheels of that truck. There he was, mashed up, legs broke, arms broke, couldn't scream, is out unconscious, pulled him out. And I stood there and I thought, now what about it? See, you get sometimes in a tight place. Be sure you make the right decision. Put God in everything that you do. Make your decisions. There's sometimes maybe when you have some money that you want to put away. Perhaps maybe you and your wife saved up money and, and got enough money to put away to kind of take care of you in your old days. That's all right. That's a legitimate thing to do. But then perhaps what if the time comes when you're to put it away, you've got to make a decision where you put it. Now, what if I'd come to you and say, say here's a place you can put it down here that's a, oh, it's one of these here fly by nights, you know, but get rich overnight, put it in there, it's a little chance. You'd say, no, sir. I won't put my money in such a place because it's just a new thing. But what would you look for to find a place to keep the money that, that you knew if you lost it in old age, you'd probably be out on the street begging. But with this money, if you put it in the right place, you'd have a security of your old age. You know what you'd do? You would find the best Oh, reliable company that you could find and invest your money. Sure, because you don't want to be on the street in your old days. You'd quickly decide, though it didn't pay as much dividends. Yet you'd want your money safe.
If you think that much about your old age and your life here, what about eternal life? What about the life you've got to li live in hereafter? You're, the people today is something like Eloisa. There was many women in that city and young girls for him to choose from, but he didn't take his own choice. He trusted God's choice. He took the one that had a supernatural sign, uh, answered a prayer, uh, submitted to the Lord. And today you want to find a place to put your money Sometimes today you want to find a place to put your membership. Some place that you want to go to church. And there's plenty of churches to go to. There's plenty of forms of religion to go to. But you've got to make a choice whether you're going to submit yourself to a spiritual church or a formal church. You've got to make your decision. You've got to take the way with the church that Jesus ordained on the day of Pentecost? Or you've got to take some of these man-made creeds that we worship today. You've got to make your choice. You might think it's a little despised, but it's reliable. If it wasn't, Christ wouldn't have ordained it. If it wasn't so, Paul wouldn't have received the Holy Ghost. All the apostles would not have received the Holy Ghost because the the God of salvation said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. These signs shall follow them that believe. Just as Ella Ezar watched that sign on the girl, you have to watch the sign of the church because Jesus said, I don't care what man said. I know man say those days of miracles is past. All these stuff is all past and gone. By days, it's no more. Now you've got to make a choice. Jesus said, let every man's word be a lie and mine be the truth. Now you've got to make up your mind. You've got to make a choice. And this may be your last time to make a choice. Tomorrow may be too late. God might have chose you to eternal life. But if you don't make up your mind and accept it, somebody else will take your place. Maybe tomorrow will be that time. God may be wanting to empty this whole roll of wheelchairs here tonight. I know He does. He may be, I know He wants to heal every sick person here. Tonight you'll have to make your choice. You say, well, Brother Branham, you're going to have a prayer line tomorrow night. Let that be for somebody else. You must make up your mind quick. What did Rebecca say? She said, I'll go now. <laughs> Praise God. That's what we want to do. Now is the hour. Now is the time for the decision. God has been here this week moving all kinds of signs and miracles and promises He's been fulfilling. Now what are you going to do about it? It's up to you now to make your decision. The time of decision comes for all peoples. And when you want something that you can rely on, certainly you do. Well, if you can rely, what would you rather rely on? A creed that some man made up. Or rely on the Bible, the writing of the apostles and Jesus Christ. I believe that the Holy Spirit that Jesus said would come upon the apostles... And would come upon whosoever would believe it, the sheep of other foes. I believe that that same Holy Spirit, you can rely upon it. And it will produce in your life just like it did in their life. Now, would I want to meet God? Would I want to meet Him? Would I dare to try to meet Him with anything short of that? Today, we have many people saying, Oh, I believe that you don't necessarily have to receive the Holy Spirit. You do or you're lost. The Blessed Virgin Mary, 
why she is called the mother of God. If the Holy Ghost baptism is so essential to belong to the church of the living God, and it has no denominations, I've been with the Branham family 50 years, and they never did ask me to join the family. Why? I was born to Branham. That's the way you're a Christian. You're born in the church of the living God. You're not joined in or baptized in or shook in. You are or tuck in by a letter, but you are born with the new birth. That's my decision. Because Christ said, except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom. And if God required Mary, the Blessed Virgin, read Acts 2. Before Mary could enter into the kingdom, she had to go up in the upper room. And she had to wait there like the rest of them did. Not until some minister came and put her name on the book. Or not when there was some kind of a communion given. Or someone shook her hand or wrote her a letter for her church. As we do today. But there came from heaven a sound like a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And they went from those rooms speaking in other languages, so filled with the Holy Ghost until they were staggering like drunk people. The Bible said so. And if Mary had to go get that kind of a religion to be in glory, you'll never get there anything short of it. Make up your mind. What are you going to do about it? It's your time of decision. When the lame man laid at the gate, been lame in his feet for years. When the apostle Peter and, and John passed through the gate, called beautiful, there was a man lame, had been carried there for years. And he asked an alm, and fastened his eyes upon Peter, him being the spokesman, an illiterate man, not able to sign his own name. The scripture said he was both ignorant and unlearned. I imagine he wasn't very much to look at. And as he passed through the gate, he thought perhaps maybe this old fisherman might have an extra coin. And he raised out his little cup. And Peter, looking at him, he said, Silver and gold have I none. He couldn't have stayed in a very good hotel, could he? Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have... I'll share it with you. He said, In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. What if the man would said, But wait a minute, sir. You don't understand my case. It's different. Have I not tried to do that for 40 years? I was born from my mother's womb. I was crippled. That might have flashed to his mind, but he had to make a decision. Was he going to listen to what Peter said? Was it the truth? Was there something about the man's voice was persuasive? He had heard of that Jesus of Nazareth. He had heard of him being a great man, and Jesus had passed through that same gate. But now he had to make a decision whether this man knew what he was talking about or not. And when he made a decision... He, Peter got him by the hand and lifted him up and he's held him up a little while until his legs got strength and he went walking, leaping, jumping and praising God. He made the right decision. You have to make a decision. Are you going to feel and say, is my heart better? Uh, is my stomach not as, quite as bad as it was? Can I move my finger just a little more? Don't think about that. Make your decision that Christ heals you and that settles it and you're well. What if a farmer went and planted a great big wheel of feet, wheat and every morning he got out there and dug all that wheat up to see if it was going to uh, uh, sprout or not. As long as he keeps digging up the seed, it will never grow. 
Every time you dig it up, it delays it another day. And every time you look at your symptoms, it delays you too in your healing. The farmer just commits the, the seed to the ground. He gets the best seed he can find. He puts it in the ground because he's made a decision he wants a crop. So he goes and gets the best seed he can find. Now, he wouldn't have very much faith in a crop that it might be mixed up with jimson weed and white top and daisies and so forth. He wouldn't have much faith in that kind of seed. But if he's got the best seed that he can buy, a germatized seed, a hybrid, and he lays it in the ground, he just commits it to the ground and don't look at it no more. He, that's up to God to take care of the rest of it. And the best seed I can find is the Word of God because it's eternal. Just commit it to your heart, not to your head. You'll keep digging it around, turning it around, saying, Well, if Dr. So-and-so said so, my pastor said days of miracles has passed. Put it in your heart. Let it alone. Start acting as if you already had your crop. Get your sickles all sharp. Get ready to go into the field. Don't dig it up every morning. Just leave it there. If it's germatized, it will work. It'll raise a crop. And is it? Look here if I ask tonight. Of cancer cases, blindness, cripples, lame, halt, all kinds of diseases by the tens of thousands are healed. It'll work if you'll put it in the right place. But if you lay it up on the shelf, it'll never do any good. Did not Jesus say, unless a corn of wheat fall into the earth and perish? Unless you can take that wheat and don't try to turn it over and look at it and guess about it. Just commit it to your heart and forget about it. It's your decision that God will take the rest of it. Now, just in closing, I'd like to say this. On our little subject tonight, the decision, Ella Ezer, did you notice when he come now, Isaac was a type of Christ. Through Isaac come Christ. And then Rebecca was a type of the church. Did you notice the, the bride and Ella Ezer? found Rebecca in the evening time. The sign was performed in the evening time. That's the time we're living in. I trust that you get this. It was in the evening time when Rebecca came out led by the Spirit. Do you believe that? How otherwise would she have come? There might have been many before her. But she was led by the Spirit in the evening time. And Eliezer, the messenger, the minister, the true servant to his master, was led in the evening time. And the true servant had left his creeds and things behind him and made up his mind that he was going to trust God in the evening time. Wonder why that Rebecca came before any of the other girls. Did you know that Rebecca and Isaac was blood relation? Cousins. And the bride of Jesus Christ is blood relation to him. A blood bought bride. No wonder she was led by the Spirit. There was a connection coming together. There was a union coming together. That's the reason I think today that the born again, the, the Holy Ghost filled people is connected with God and are led by the Spirit of God. That's why they act so peculiar to the people. They've made their decisions. They're going to Go on out, regardless if the rest of them don't go out there going anyhow. I like that. Don't care if this one walks or that one walks, I'm going to walk anyhow. I don't care whether this one 
If it, what they say, I don't. They call me anything they want to. I'm going anyhow. Why? The life is in the blood, and the life is in the church. The Christian that's born again by the Spirit of God. That's the Spirit of life, blood relation to Christ. The Spirit of Christ in the blood of Christ, leading a child of Christ, the seed of Abraham. That's why they move peculiarly. That's why the world thinks so strange of them. And remember, Rebecca, hardly knowing what she was doing, yet she watered the same animal, the camel, that was to take her to her bridegroom, to her husband, her lover. And always a beast of burden in the Bible represents a power. Like the beast come up out of the sea in Revelations. It was a power that raised up among the people. And this beast was being watered. Rebecca watered the same beast that she rode on. had taken her away from her place here to her new home. Is a type of the church today watering and blessing the same Holy Spirit is going to lift it up and take it to its new home. The church that's praising and blessing and watering with thanksgiving to the Holy Ghost who has brought the word to you. The camel packed the messenger. Eliezer, the true messenger, who looked for a sign to the woman that he was going to take. It was God's choice because he was going to watch for the supernatural. I trust you'll do the same thing. Watch for the place where the signs are following. That was the only difference you could make out between Moab and Israel. While fundamentally they were both right. Fundamentally Cain and Abel was both right. Cain built church. Abel built a church. Cain made a sacrifice. Abel made a sacrifice. Cain worshipped. Abel worshipped. So if going to church, having a creed, worshipping, paying in, making sacrifice, if that's all God requires, He was unjust to destroy Cain. But there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. Abel had the revelation. And look here at when that same group Watch them how Cain's people and then Saith's people, death of Abel and the coming of uh, Saith was the death and resurrection of Christ. Watch how them two lineages run, them two streams of blood. The side of Cain becomes smart man, scientists, educated scholars. The other side were humble peasants. They tempered iron and made metal and great builders, science. Very religious. Still running the same way. See I, how it is? No wonder Jesus said it would deceive the very elect if possible. Watch them two trees coming up through Eden. Here they come on over to, to Israel. A little old group of people that was all not denominated, just wandering around tent dwellers. And they come down there and stopped at the foot of the land and asked their brother, Moab, a believer in God, if they, if they could just pass through the land, they wouldn't do no harm. They just wanted a campaign, that was all. And they wouldn't do no harm to them. And said, the cattle licks up some grass, we'll pay for it. They drink any water, we'll pay for it. But Moab went and called the bishop out and said, now come here a minute. You've got to go down there and curse him. So they got him up on top of the hill and showed him the worst part of Israel. And look. Balaam said, build me seven altars. That's exactly what was in Israel. Fundamentally right. Put me seven clean sacrifices upon them. Exactly what was in Israel, just below the hill. And put a ram on each one. What was that? Representing and speaking of the coming of Jesus. Both of them the same one. Fundamentally, just as much right as the other one was right. Fundamentally speaking. But what did he fail to see? He failed to hear the shout of the king in the camp down there. They had a smitten rock. They had a pillar of fire, a supernatural sign. They failed to see that. 
That's what's the matter with the world today. They fail to see it. Oh, no. Balaam might have said, well, sure, they've done all kinds of bad things, but, but they fail to see that smitten rock going before them, making an atonement for them all the time. That's what it is today. They say, Pentecostal people, them that shout and carry on, that's the same kind they had in the Old Test in the New Testament. At the day of Pentecost, they had the same kind of things. Those people speak with tongues and they pray for the sick. They got divine healers. And I know honorary things they've done. And yes, and their other side's done a bunch of it too, but you just don't hear it. But he failed to see that smitten rock and those signs, the supernatural signs. And he couldn't curse it. Every time he tried to curse, God blessed it. You can't never smother it out. It's God's message. It'll burn till Jesus comes. Certainly it will. And so she watered the camel, the animal, the power that was to take her home, to her new home. And another thing, did you notice when she went over now, being blood relation, just by faith she believed it. Only thing she had was a servant's message. That's all maybe you got. My message. I want to be a true servant to the Word. The blessings are for you. They're yours. I know it's not popular, but I don't care about popularity. I want to be honest to my master, as Eliezer was. I want a clean-cut decision out of you, like Eliezer. Come out and tell me whether you believe it or not. I want a clean-cut decision. A true servant requires that. If you do, then act like it. See? Go on. Put it into action. Come go along. And when they got over there close to the, to the land of where she was to see her lover, she had never seen him. But listen, the Bible said that Isaac had wandered away from the tent and was out in the field. Do you know the church isn't going to meet Jesus in heaven? It's going to meet him in the air. He's already wandered from the Father's home now, I believe. He went out to meditate. And all of a sudden, he lifted up his eyes and he saw this camel bringing his bride. I noticed it was in the evening time again. At the evening, the setting of the sun. This message has traveled from the east all the way to the west, and we're on the west coast right now. It can't go any farther. It'll go back east again. It's evening time. It's evening time in civilization. They've kept bitten, biting and carrying on and taking a bit off an atomic bomb off the tree of knowledge. What are they going to do with it? Destroy themselves. Civilization's at the end. The church is created and denominated and twisted and turned and all kinds of isms and so forth until it's at the end. Human life's at the end. Well, they got no more respect for one another and, and motherhood's at the end. Everything seems to be at the end. What is it? It's evening time. That's the time that the church is going home. And Isaac is on his road. And as soon as Rebecca seen him, she flashed those pretty eyes upon him. She put the veil around her face and jumped off the camel and run to meet him. It was love at the first sight. He seen her and he loved her. Tuck her into his father's tent and the wedding supper. Oh, we're in the evening time. Have you made your decision yet? Have you fully surrendered everything to Jesus Christ? Is He your King, your Savior, your Healer? He's the one, your lover, the one you're looking for. Have you fully made up your mind? If you've made up your decision, made your decision, made up your mind to it, God bless you. If you haven't made up your mind, do it right now. Make your decision. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, it's truly evening time. But you promised that the evening lights would be shining in the evening time. It'll be the same light that showed in the morning, for it's the same sun. 
mechanically speaking. And it's the same Son of God, spiritually speaking, that showed His great light upon a church that He ordained on the day of Pentecost. That same Son of God, His light is shining upon the Western people in the evening time with another Pentecostal group of believers. Oh, God, we know they're mixed up and called Baptists, Presbyterians, Lutherans, and so forth, but they're a Pentecostal experience. They're your children. That's the bride that you're coming after. And it's just about time for her to go. God grant tonight that out in Radio Land or in this visible audience, if there are those here or out there that have not yet made a decision, may this be their hour of decision. That they will sell out everything of the world, all their lust and their fashions and their pride and and just sell completely out and say, Now, Holy Spirit, take me. Just use me and, and put your faith in my heart. And let me walk after you, not the things that I see, but the things that you'll lead me to. For truly, I believe, Lord, that he'll lead them to Jesus, who we are to see soon in his coming. If they've been all mixed up and their minds so confused, may they look back and take the reliable. Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. How much more reliability could we place upon anything than the words of the eternal Son of God? Today, man, try to twist that around and say, that was just for a certain people. God, I wouldn't want any deposit upon that. Let me make my choice on what he says, thus saith the Lord. Believe that. As that blessed scripture says, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. A little while in the world won't see me no more. Yet ye shall see me, for I'll be with you to the end of the world. And the works that I do shall you do also. I am the vine, ye are the branches. And Lord, if the first branch that come forth out of that vine was a Pentecostal branch, filled with the Holy Ghost, signs and wonders and fruits of the Spirit hanging on that vine in the branch, if the second branch comes forth, it'll have to be a Pentecostal branch if it comes out of the same vine. Oh, Lord, may men and women realize that and come back to a true Pentecostal experience of being born of the Holy Ghost and believing in the supernatural workings that God promised that His Spirit would do in our midst. If such persons are in the radio land and haven't received that experience, will you, in Jesus' name, bow your heads out in radio land and receive Jesus just now? When He comes in, in the fullness of His power, He'll come just exactly the way He come on the day of Pentecost. There will not be one thing different. An enthusiasm that'll burn your heart. That'll make you so happy and full of joy till you'll stagger like you were full of, of strong drinks. For the Scripture has said, Be not drunk upon strong drinks, which biteth like a, an adler and stingeth like a serpent, but be ye drunk on the Spirit. Radio friends, if you haven't received that, listen to me tonight as your brother. I love you. Please find you a little secret place just now. 
Many of you find church members out there that belong to different churches. I, I'm not speaking against your church, my dear friend. I'm not against any denomination. No Protestant, Catholic, or Jew, or what more. Jehovah Witness or Christian Science, whatever you may be, that, that doesn't matter to me. I don't think it matters to God. The thing of it is, if you are born again, if you have received the Holy Spirit, then you're children of God. Receive it tonight, won't you? And we're going to pray just in a moment for you out there, for the sick also. But first, we're speaking of the soul. Now, I turn to this audience here. Hundreds are sitting in the Angelus Temple tonight. I'm looking across your scene. The majority of you, your hair frosted gray. You're turning back now. But no matter, there's some young people here, lots of them. You have no assurance that you're going to be living in the morning. This may be the last time you have the opportunity to make your decision. Make it now, won't you? And all that's in here that has never received this great blessing of the Holy Spirit and would desire my prayers for you to receive it, would you hold up your hands all over the Angelus Temple? It has not received the Holy Spirit. God bless you out through there, all out through, up in the balconies, up. God bless you up there. I trust that this will be the night that you will receive it. You might say to me, Brother Branham, does that mean anything when I raise up my hands? Certainly, you're making a decision. You've made your first step towards it. And you out in Radio Land, I don't care where you are. Move over. Get out of your car. Drive off the side of the road. Kneel down. Bow your head over the wheel some way. Mother, quit washing the dishes. Or, and if the party's all listening in and you're talking and making sandwiches, lay it down. Somebody in the room, kneel and start praying. Lead the rest of them. They'll follow you. Dad, if you're sitting there half drunk tonight, your poor little wife sitting in the corner crying with the kitties, aren't you ashamed of yourself? Dad, do you know you may not be here in the morning? I feel sorry for you. My father drank. I know how to sympathize with a family that has to go through that. Now maybe it's the mother that's drinking. Whatever it is, lay it aside. Now I want you to come to Christ just now. You say, oh, Brother Branham, I've tried that lots of times. But wait, you never fully made up your mind. You might just been under a little emotion of some sort. But if you really make up your mind and make a decision, Christ is going to receive you. And you in the hospitals out there and in the sick beds, it's not able to be here tonight for the line of prayer and the discernment and the things the Lord's going to do. Wish you were here because I believe that God is going to do a great thing. I want you to remember in Radio Land, tomorrow afternoon is a life story at 2.30. Please try to be here. Bring sinners, everybody, bring a sinner with you tomorrow to that special service. Then tomorrow night is a closing of the healing service. Usually more healed than time because it's the anticipation. Now all in the building here and out in Radio Land, while we just got a few minutes left in radio time, will you make your decision out in your own heart that from this night, this very hour, this time, you're going to sell out every bit of unbelief. You're going to sell out all the things of the world. Lay it aside. The Scripture said, Seeing it, we are compassed about by such a great cloud of witnesses. Re Hebrews 11th chapter. The faith warriors of the Bible. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us that we might run with patience the race that's set before us, looking to the author and finisher of our faith, the Lord Jesus. His kindness and mercies, tenderness. And after 2,000 years, here still alive tonight, showing himself alive. And now let us all pray. And you here in the, the temple tonight, bow your heads while we go to prayer. If our sister will is moving over to the organ, just for this special occasion, I want you to play, if you will, I am coming, Lord, if you will. Now, make your decision.
Get ready now for prayer, and I'll pray with you, and we'll all pray together, and I'm sure the Lord's going to answer. Might be a good time for you people in these chairs before the prayer line starts. You start making your decision now that you're going to accept your healing right now. While we bow our heads. Lord, may this song that's now being played, I am coming, Lord, coming now to Thee. Wash me, cleanse me. Grant it, Lord. Out there in the radio land, Lord, may those that have obeyed the servant's voice of this message of a rich king that holds eternal life, the greatest treasure that could be given. Meaning by this, that to accept the message, they would never perish, but but have eternal life forever. For our Lord said, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has eternal life. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Now, Lord, maybe many people who has been deceived in their faith, we realize that you did give Abraham credit, and he was justified by faith believing on you. And that's all the man could do was to believe. But you confirmed his faith by giving him the seal of circumcision. And Father, may many in the land tonight who say that they have believed on you, but you said if they believed, they would be receive the Holy Ghost, the seal of circumcision of the heart. That God has come in with His Word and has circumcised the heart and made Himself a dwelling place where He could control them in their faith, having them to believe for their sicknesses and their diseases. Grant, Lord, that all that's listening in tonight out there that's got a, an attitude in their heart to make this decision for you. May they receive Christ in their hearts just now. And may they come over to the Angelus Temple and tell us about it, that they receive Christ as their personal Savior. And then be baptized into the fellowship of some good church. Grant it, Lord. And to the sick and the afflicted that's in the hospital, listening in, in the homes or in the cars or, or across the land, wherever it may be, may the same Holy Spirit that led Rebecca out to receive the message, may they realize it's, it's the same Holy Spirit that led them to tune this station in tonight. And may they be healed of all their sicknesses and diseases. Grant it, Father, and all these that's in divine presence here, may you fill their hearts with the Holy Spirit and heal every person that's now in divine presence. Grant it, Lord, for we commit it to Thee in the name of Thy Son, the Lord Jesus. Amen. Let us sing that one verse of that song, if you will. I am coming, Lord. Would you, Billy, would you come here and help me to lead this song, if you will? And in Radio Land, trusting that you have made that great decision now for the Lord Jesus, that you feel that you are healed of your sickness and your sins are under the blood. May the Lord God bless you as we sing this song. All right. Lord, coming, Lord, coming now to Thee. Wash me, cleanse me in the blood that flow from Calvary. Let's raise our hands here in the temple now. Let's just say, Lord, I'm Coming now to Thee, wash me, cleanse me in the blood that flow on Calvary.
free. How many of you now has made up your mind that from this night henceforth you're going to hold on to God's unchanging hand until you receive what you've asked for? God bless you. I believe you'll go from this building tonight with whatever you ask for. It shall be yours. Now it's time to call the prayer line. This group of Angelus Temple with me to Australia, watch what takes place, or in the Siam or somewhere overseas. We see setting present tonight Brother Julius Stadscliffe, Captain Stadscliffe from Barstow, chaplain in the United States Army. Now, from 50 to 60 stand while they're met. Uh, Brother Stadscliffe was with me in Africa and was there at Durban that day when 30,000 heathens received Jesus as personal Savior at one time. Where are you, chaplain? Now you're here, here he is standing. Would you stand up just to your feet a minute? Well, Brother Stadscliffe was a witness of it. There he wrote the book of Prophet Visits Africa. Do you realize that was ten times bigger than Pentecost? Ten times larger than Pentecost. Thirty thousand blanket natives received Jesus as personal Savior. Broke their little old, uh, idols that they were packing on the ground. Dr. Baxter said to me, he said, Brother Branham, I believe they meant physical healing. They didn't mean receiving Christ. said, you better let that go through again. I said, I did not mean for physical healing. I'll pray for you later. I mean those who want to receive Christ as personal Savior. If you're real sincere, break your idols on the ground. It's like a dust storm. See? The gospel is what attracts the attention of people. Well, of course, we Americans, we're too intellectual to believe that, you know. So that's something old-fashioned. They're getting it where we're leaving it. That's, that's it. All right. Anywhere from 50 to 75. Now take your place. Jays, from 50 to 75. Get your place back in the line over there. If you'll... Uh, maybe you could go out around, I believe. Maybe don't you think that'd be better to open the door and let them come down? Or come right through here, Brother Mike says, to come right down this way and get your position. Oh, how happy I am to know that people still have faith in, in God. I would not trade my faith in God if, if something would promise me that I could live a... 10,000 years here on earth and have all the earth in my hands and do what I wanted to, I would turn it down flatly to receive Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. It's, he's been my life. He's been my hopes. He's, if the end of the world, when Jesus comes, and I mean this, I'm not saying this just because I'm before you, at that day, if I walk up before him and he says, you don't deserve to come to my heaven, I'll say, that is true, Lord. I do not deserve it. And if he turns me down, I'll still love him wherever I am. I love him. Something happened to me about 32 years ago. Christ came into my heart. And it's been the most greatest thing. Now, I think we're up to 75 now, Brother Mike. 75 to 100. Now, you take your place over there. That's all with prayer cards now. Jays, take your position out there in the, the line. 75 to 100. All right. Pretty soon the line will be lined. It's almost all the way around the temple now, going out into the outer court, out into the aisles outside. So the prayer line being formed. And Radio Land, I wish you could see this, to see people coming with the great anticipations, marks on their face. Some of them are coming and perhaps think, well, I've suffered a long time, but this is my night. I'm making my decision for Christ. I'm coming now to believe Him as my healer, as I did for my Savior. Now, tomorrow night, as I say, will be the closing of this meeting. And I would like to see you in Radio Land. Many of you, sure. That fellow that time, they hired to come up and hypnotize me, sitting out in the line like that. They had him at these army camps to hypnotize these soldiers, make them bark like dogs. 
and act, you know, how they would do just under hypnotism. This fella come up and the devil sent him around and was going to hypnotize me at the platform. You remember when it happened? Montreal. And when he did that, I felt that evil spirit and turned around. I said, why has the devil put that in your heart? He looked at me real funny and ducked his head down. I said, you tried to hypnotize the servant of the Lord? He thought it was a telepathy. I said, because you've done this, God will judge you for that. See you unto it. And they packed him out of there paralyzed, and he's paralyzed yet today. We're not playing church now. Remember, remember the days when someone tried to go out and cast out an evil spirit? In the days of Paul, you know what happened to him? An epileptic come up on them? Certainly. So now you remember, you in the prayer line. I'm not taking discernment in the prayer line. I'm just going to pray for you all week long. Discernment's been through the meeting here with people who just gathered in. But tonight it's just praying, unless the Lord would stop me to say something to somebody. But now how many in the building tonight has never seen one of our services before? Let's see your hands. It's a good thing everybody don't come to the Angeles Temple the same night. They'd be piled across in the park. <laughs> just almost a new crowd every night. That you might know Jesus Christ did not claim to be a healer. He said, I do nothing till the Father shows me. But he could. He knowed the people. He told them who they was, what their names was. How many of you newcomers believe that? Told Philip uh, or Nathaniel where Philip found him under a tree praying, told him what he was, told Peter what his name was. And by this they believed he was the Messiah. That was the sign of the Messiah. And when he went over to the Samaritans, see, he never went to the Gentiles, or he did not commission his disciples to do so. He said, don't go to the way of the Gentiles, go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. But the Samaritans was looking for the coming of the Messiah. How many knows that to be true? Say amen. Well, then if they're looking, he had to make himself known. He passed by the way of Samaria, he found a woman, and she was living in adultery. And he said to her, go get your husband and come here. She said, I have no husband. He said, that's right. You've got five, and the one you're living with, not your husband. She said, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Now listen to that woman's voice. We know, she said, I perceive that you are a prophet. But we know when the Messiah cometh, he'll tell us all these things. Now, how many knows that's the Scripture? St. John 4, say, Amen. That was a sign of the Messiah. She couldn't understand who he was. She said, he must be a prophet. But how many knows that the Messiah was to be the God prophet? Say, amen. Certainly, if you ever read the Bible, Moses said, the Lord your God shall raise up a prophet like unto me. It'll come to pass, who sure ever not hear it. That's the reason they was looking for it. That's the reason the real Jew believed him when he'd done the sign of the prophet. The unbelieving Jew, the, all the classical type, they said, this man's a fortune teller, Beelzebub. And anybody knows that fortune-telling is of the devil. That's right. It's a perverted spirit. And said, he's a Beelzebub. And Jesus said, that would be blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. To speak one word against the Holy Ghost would be blasphemy. Would never be forgiven in this world or the world to come. Now, how many of you people in this prayer line, strangers to me, and out in the audience, raise up your hands. You know, I don't know nothing about you. As strangers. Here, this first woman, all the way down the line, strangers. Well, then, if the Lord... Come here, woman, lady. Stand right there by that mic. Just right there. Now, I want you to look to me just a moment. Is this our first time ever meeting? If it is, just raise up your hand so the visible audience can see in the radio. Hundreds and hundreds here witness a woman, a young woman, with her hand up. We've never met before. Here's God's Bible. I do not know you. Perhaps you don't know me. Now, if this isn't a perfect picture of St. John 4, a man and a woman meeting for their first time. Now, if I don't know you and you do not know me, and then if the Holy Spirit, there's something that you're here for, I don't know what it is. Might be sickness, might not be sickness, might be financial, it might be for somebody else. I don't know. But if the Lord will reveal to me what you're here for, will you believe that it is the Spirit that was promised in the last days to come upon the Gentile church just before the destruction, as Jesus said, as it was in the days of Sodom when that same sign was done? You believe it. How many in the visible audience would believe it? 
If both of us with our hands before God, we don't know one another. Just so that you in the line down there might know also. Now stand right where you are just to talk to you a minute to get the Spirit of the Lord to anoint us. Now she's a woman. I'm a man. She might be a sinner. She might not. She might be a critic. I, I don't know. But the Lord does know. He can reveal it to me. And then it'd be up to you what you think about it. Seemingly there's more faith in the audience than there is in the line here. It's just when you... The anointing. How many's ever seen the picture of that angel of the Lord? Let's see your hands up. Of course, sure. That's been traced. It's in the Religious Hall of Art in Washington, D.C., copyrighted. The only supernatural being was ever scientifically proven to be photographed. That picture that you see of the angel of the Lord before God who I stand, it isn't two feet from where I am right now. The same pillar of fire that led the children of Israel. It was made flesh and dwelt among us. It did these kind of signs. He said, I come from God, the pillar of fire. I return back to God. On the road to Damascus, Paul met him. And he was stricken down, a great light that put his eyes out, that said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He said, Who are you? He said, I'm Jesus. And here he is with his picture taken among us. Now, cameras don't take psychology. The mechanical eye of the camera. is something struck the lens. Make your decision now to believe it, if he will speak to this young woman. Yes, there's her, the vision of the woman coming up. She's seriously ill. Frankly, she's pending an operation. Did you hear her say in Radio Land too? It's true. Uh, how was that done? How did I ever know? I couldn't tell you now what I said. That was a, a spirit of Christ using my voice. The Holy Spirit spoke it out, utterance that I don't know nothing about. You say, you might have guessed that, Brother Branham. Now, all that's in the visible audience that heard that and seen that perfectly, say, Amen. Amen. The radio audience hears it. Now, if you think it was a guess, I shall speak to the woman. She's weeping. Why? I'm looking at the woman, and all around the woman is that light. What is it? To you scientists that might be listening, it's another dimension. It's another world. Now let's see what's taking place. Yes, I see her at a doctor. The examiner, yes, he said an operation. And that operation is on the female glands. That's right. And I see something in other words about your ear. It's your left ear. It's got a growth in it. And it must be operated on, or as the doctor says so. That's thus saith the Lord. Do you believe now, sister? Do you believe out in Radio Land? I know you do. Do you believe out here? Now, see, that's exactly what Jesus said would take place just before the end of the Gentile age. The Messiah, not me. I'm a man. It's His Spirit, that same anointing you feel. That's that same Spirit that you're talking. It's, this is just a gift. You might be like uh, Dr. Uh, Duffield here. He's a preacher. When he preaches, he has that anointing. You ministers have that anointing. You people who speak with tongues have that anointing. If it's really the Holy Ghost speaking through you. See? It's the same Spirit, only operating in different forms to prove what the Scripture says is right. Now, to someone on the radio out there, Paul said, if you all speak with tongues and the unlearned comes in, the unconverted, they'll say you're all mad. But if one will be a prophet, prophesy and reveal the things of the heart, then they'll fall down and say, truly God is with you. Now, you criticize the Pentecost for speaking in tongues. Now, what about this? Make your decision tonight. Come to him and believe. Let us pray now for this woman. And then the rest of you in the line, if the Holy Spirit should speak definitely to me for something, I'll, I'll stop with you. If not, how many of you, if he doesn't say one more word, but just goes on, you're still going to believe that Jesus Christ has made you well by his atonement. 
Not because Brother Branham prayed for you. Not because we're laying hands on you. But because that it's his promise, these signs shall follow them that believe. Are you going to believe it? Raise up your hands if you are along there. All out in the audience, believe now. You've made your decision. It's settled. You believe it. All right. The Lord bless in this great group here in the visible audience and also the invisible audience until we go off the air. I thought we were going off at 9.30 as usual, but I see the light's still on and we're on the air. So you be in prayer everywhere as we pass these people down the line praying for them. Come, sister dear. Great Holy Spirit, who has revealed this woman's conditions or her heart, whatever it might have been, I pray that you'll grant to her her desire in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Bless the Lord. Go believe me. Thank you, Father. Now, here's a woman coming. I don't know her. She's a colored woman. But I just so that you would know that the Holy Spirit's still here after talking. The woman is going to die right away if God doesn't help her because she's shattered with a dark shadow of cancer. Death is striking the woman. You believe that God will heal you of that lady? Come right here. Oh, Lord. I pray for this woman. Only you can heal her. And this great church of the living God out across the country that's in prayer, let our sister live in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't doubt. Believe. It just happens to be the next woman coming is shattered the same way you have cancer. If you'll believe now that God will heal you, come now and don't doubt at all, but believe that you're going to be healed. And Lord, I pray that you'll grant this unto her and let her be healed up in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I don't doubt, you know, just your heart will be made well and you'll be all right. And if you'll believe you are coming, the arthritis will leave you and you'll go and be well. Do you believe it? In the name of the Lord Jesus, grant the healing of this woman. Amen. Now come, sister. You believe that God can make you well? Come and let us pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, may our sister be healed. Amen. All right. If I don't say a word to you, you know that I know what's wrong with you. You're aware of that. But if I don't say a word to you, you believe you're back. A... You believe you'll get well anyhow? All right, go ahead. I said it anyhow. See, God bless you and be here. Amen. You believe you could go eat now and your stomach will be all right and you'll be well? All right, go get your hamburger and eat it then and enjoy it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord God, I pray that you will grant the healing of our sister in Jesus' name. Now, pray for me here, you in the audience. The visions are, I can't get away from them. To do, I'll go ahead and stop the line just in a minute, you see. So, it's this vision's breaking constantly. So, just keep praying that God let me stand here. Visions make you weak. How many understands that? Say amen. You remember the little woman that touched his garment? One woman touched his garment and he turned around and said, who touched me? He looked around until he found the woman and he told her of her blood issue and her faith had healed her. Now, if one vision made the Son of God weak, what would it do to the me, a sinner saved by grace? There's only one way I could stand here. That is because He promised, The works that I do shall you also, more than this shall you do. I know King James says greater, but you could be no greater. It's just more of it. See, because He raised the dead, stopped nature, done everything. More than this shall you do, for I go to my Father. Lord, I pray that you'll heal our brother and make him well through Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Come, sister. There it is again. This strike as soon as she moves. Now, look, if you think, look, at you believe God could heal that tumor and make you well? All right. Go believe him. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, may she be healed. Here it is again. See? Can you see that light? Look, look here. See here, between me and the woman? Now, the woman, I see her backing away from a table. See? It's stomach trouble. See, that's how I know. That's right, isn't it, lady? It's all right. Go eat now. It's left you. The shadows is gone from you. Just have faith. Now come believing with all your heart. Lord Jesus, I pray for the woman that you will heal her in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Come, sister. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we lay hands upon her with this great ransom church of God by the thousands of praying. She must be healed. Amen. Praise God. Come. I'm praying. This woman here sits right here again. You believe the heart trouble's going to leave you, you're going to be made well. Lord, in Jesus' name, heal her and make her well. See, what it is, it's really not what it is. See, it's a nervous condition. It causes that flutters, mainly after eats worse than ever. You, you call it that, heart trouble, but it really is a nervous condition. Go believing now. And you, that fluttering won't hurt you. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, I pray that you will heal the man in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Come, sir. Come, brother. Do you believe now? Then go eat your supper now. It's all over now. Believe now. Oh, Chinese? Yeah. 
Japanese. All right. Your people behind you perhaps come to worship Buddha, but the, you're Christian, believe in Christ. That's right, because I feel your spirit, see, that you're welcome. Now you're shattered to death, you realize that, but with that cancer. But do you believe that Jesus will heal you, and then you'll take the message to your Japanese people? I aim to visit your land right away. For you. God bless you. Come here, let me pray for you. O oh Lord, creator of heavens and earth, bless this woman and heal her in the name of Jesus Christ for your glory. Amen. Amen. God bless you, sister. Amen. Come now, believe him. Oh, Lord, I pray for our sister that you'll heal her and make her well. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Come, my brother. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, may our brother be healed. Amen. All right, come, my brother. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may our brother be healed. Amen. I come believe. See, if there's something other about it, if you don't say something to the people, they don't seem to respond to it. You don't, don't look at that. Each one, that doesn't heal you. Just believe that you're healed. Now, just look here, this woman. Uh, is this the next person? Yes. All right. We're strange. The people can see that you got a garter in, uh, place there in your throat. Now, they can see that. But otherwise, you look healthy. Now, let me see if the Lord will reveal to me what's wrong. Yes, yeah, the female trouble. That's what you're here to be prayed for is the female trouble. That's right. Now go and believe and be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. See? Mm -hmm. See, it's, it, you can do it, but it weakens me. The lady, come here now. Let's, let's pray. Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, may she be healed. Amen. Come, sister. Be praying all you church now, everywhere. In the name of Jesus Christ, heal our sister. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, heal our sister. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, heal our brother. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I lay my hands upon brother. You said these signs shall follow them that believe. Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may our sister be healed. Father, it is written, these signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. This I do in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now don't get scared, see. You're afraid of heart attack, see. But don't worry about that. You're Praise not going to have Lord. one. Praise <laughs> the Lord. God bless you. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, heal our sister. Amen. The reason I said that to both visible and invisible audience is because a woman was afraid she was going to die. See, she isn't. All right. Come. You're a healthy-looking man, but you're needing an operation, a tumor. You believe God will heal you? Yes. All right, then go and be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, heal our sister. Amen. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, heal this our brother. Amen. You believe God will heal you, my little brother? Oh, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, grant the healing of my brother. Amen. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, heal this, my brother. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, heal my brother. Amen. Just seems like that they need to... Okay. How would you all think tomorrow night would just run a, just a few through the line of straight discernment? Would you would rather it be that way? See, or the, will you like this kind of a line better where they all come through? Raise your hands. Which one you like the best? They're all coming through? All right. That's fine. Then act now. Come up to you. Believe it. See, the Lord is sure. The Lord does these things. Um, God can grant it. You've come a long ways for this, haven't you, sister? You believe it, he'll make you well? Mm -hmm. now, anyone can see there's a growth there in your eyes. That's true. But I see you coming from a long distance. You're not from the city here. No, you believe God can tell me where you're from? Way away, about 1,500 miles, about Montana. That's just about where you, you did come from, Montana. That's right. That's a cancer. You've had an operation. It didn't do any good. And you've drove all this, or come all this way here for me to pray for you. That's thus saith the Lord. That's right. Raise your hand. We're total strangers to one another. That's true. This is our first meeting time. Surely God will answer prayer for you. Come over here now. Let me pray for you. 
Now, if the radio audience is listening in, this woman, I've never seen her in my life. She just come up here and I just stopped a moment with her because she's got a, look like a, a something right in between her eyes. And the Holy Spirit had just revealed these things. And I do not know the lady, never seen her in my life. This is our first time meeting. Isn't that right, lady? That's right. Sit so the audience or radio will see we're on the radio. That's right. You, um, you love the Lord? Now we're going to ask God to remove this. Heavenly Father, cursed be this enemy. Satan, you've hid from the doctor, but you can't hide from God. Come out of there. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you leave the woman. Amen. I go rejoice in you. Well, write me your testimony and give it to me. All right. All right. The little fellows, come right, come right on up. Lord, upon the little ones it is written, Suffer little children to come unto me and forbid them not. Now, if you were here, you would lay your hands upon them. They'd be well. Your precious body sets at the right hand of God Almighty tonight in heaven. And you've sent down the Holy Spirit to continue the work. I lay my hands upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And to the sister, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you now. Go believing. All right, come, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for my brother. Amen. Come, my brother. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for him for his healing. Amen. Bless you, sir. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for his healing. Amen. Oh, Lord, heal this man as he passes by. May he not pass by me. But under the cross of Christ, may he be healed. Amen. Come, my sister. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, may our sister be healed as she passes under the cross. Amen. Lord, as this woman come, may her decision be that she has made up her mind now. In the name of Jesus Christ, may she be healed. Amen. See how people, if there's not something said to them, they do it. How am I going to use my ministry? See, the way the Lord told me was to just take the one and talk to them and so forth, let the rest of them believe, see? And this, I have a congregational prayer. But you see how it does? I hear, you so that you'll know that the Holy Spirit, this woman and I, you're, you're the next person in the line here. We're strangers to one another. Jesus Christ knows us both. Do you believe that? Yes. If God will reveal to me what your trouble is, you look like a healthy woman. But if you so the audience will see, we have never met. This is our first meeting time. Is that right? This just raise up your hand so the people see. All right. And now, I do not have no more idea what you're there for than nothing. But if the Holy Spirit will reveal to me what you're there for. Will you accept it as being from Christ? One thing is your eyes. Then a growth on the head. That's right. Back in your hair. There can't see it visible, but it's under your hair. Yes, that's right. That's true. You're not from this city. You're from Long Beach. Mm -hmm. You believe God can tell me who you are? Yes, sir. Miss Wiggs? That's exactly right. <laughs> All right. Now go home and believe. Now the same God that knows who Peter was knows who you are. All right, let's pray. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, heal our sister. Amen. Come. Do you believe with all your heart? Now be praying for these people now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, heal, Lord. Come, sister dear. Come believing that you're going to be healed. Father God, as she passes under the cross, may the God of heaven heal her body. Amen. Come, sister. God, in the name of Jesus Christ, may our sister be healed. God, in the name of Jesus Christ, may our sister be healed. Amen. God, in the name of Jesus Christ, may our sister be healed. Amen. Now come believing, rejoicing, see. In the name of Jesus Christ, may our brother be healed. Come, brother. In the name of Jesus Christ, may our brother be healed. God bless you. That's the way to be healed. That's the way to be healed. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, may our sister be healed. Amen. Father God, I lay hands on my brother. In the name of Jesus Christ, may he be healed. Amen. God, I pray for our sister that you'll heal her. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God, see this poor man coming with palsy. 
May he be healed as we bless him in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless our sister as she comes for her healing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I remember, I'm not a healer. I just pray for the sick. God answers prayer. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, make our sister well. Amen. If thou canst believe, that old nervousness would leave you. <laughs> you believe it? Art born rejoicing. Amen. Lord, answer prayer as I pray for our sister in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Come, my sister. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, may she be healed. Amen. Come, sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, may our sister be healed. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thy son, I ask for healing for my sister. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask for the healing of my sister. Father God, I ask in the name of Jesus Christ for her healing. Amen. Come, sister. You believe? Yes. I see you as a believer yes. when you come there. You've had your ups and downs in life. Walk on a greater walk, closer walk. But you're fixed and pending for this operation now. You believe God will heal you? I do. Take the tumor yes. out, yes. Uh, out of the uterus, and make you well. You yes. believe that? Then I go do. and receive it in the name of the Lord Thank Jesus. You. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, I pray for our sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, may she be healed. Lord, I pray for our sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, may she be healed. Come, my brother. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, God, that you'll heal. Amen. Come, sister. Lord, I lay hands on our sister in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Right? You believe with all your heart? In the name of Jesus Christ, may they leave you. Amen. God bless this little lady and the one that is brought. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, sister. The Lord bless and heal our sister in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. The Lord bless and heal our sister in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Come, sister. In the name of the Lord Jesus, God bless and heal our sister. Amen. My brother, are you believing? Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ, go and be well. God, in the name of our Lord Jesus, heal our brother. Amen. Father God, I pray for sister in the name of Jesus Christ for her healing. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay hands upon our sister for her healing. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay hands upon our sister for her healing. That is the end of the prayer line at this time for this part. Now, the great healing comes from the outside. I want some of you brethren sitting along there on the front. Are you believers sitting there? Up here in the front of these rows here. Ministers, so forth. Walk up here and lay hands on these people right here. Some of you believers in the building. That's fine. Thank you, brethren. That's good. Now, I want you to look how many is going to be praying for you. Now, how many out there needs healing? Raise up your hand. Now, everyone that's got their hands up is believers. Wave your hand like this. All right? Now, you lay your hand on somebody that's waving their hand next to you. If you'll do that, and believe now, don't doubt, but we'll believe. Now bow your heads everywhere and you pray yourself. You pray for the person next to you. I see two or three women here has got their hands up, nobody with their hands on them. Put your hands on some of these women over here to my left. Someone lay your hands. Don't pray for yourself now. Pray for the next person. I want you to know that God answers your prayer. Now as soon as you feel that the person praying for you, that you're healed, I want you to stand up. Everyone that feels that you're healed, as soon as you have made your decision and believe that you're healed now, I want you to stand up, each one that believes when you're healed. Now, I'm going to pray for the entire audience. Lord God, 
I do not see why that every person should not be healed. Oh, Lord, we believe. We believe the messenger. The messenger is the Holy Ghost. Our decision is made right now. We believe it. Now, Satan, we come to you as to say that you're only a bluff. You have no legal rights to hold these people any longer. They are God's heritage. They are His people. Come out of them. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the angel of God who's present, the great pillar of fire that's hanging here in this building now, that's proved Himself to be here before the people showing the evidence of Him being here. Come out, Satan, in the name of Jesus, who is alive tonight to make you leave the people. Now, all that accepts your healing, stand on your feet. Everyone in the building that now accepts your healing, stand on your feet. Praise the Lord. There it is. That's it. Amen. Now let's sing, I will praise Him. Everyone, to the top of your voice. Come, Billy. I will praise Him. I will praise Him. him. Raise up your hands now. Have you made your decision? Wave your hands. If you've made your decision, wave your hands. Can wash away. 